So hello guys, I'm ready for another day of some badass science and I hope you are too. So today I will be working here at the Biomed Research Institute. So we're now at Biomed, which is short for the Biomedical Research Institute. And here they focus on three different topics of research. First one being immunology, so how our immune system, the defense system of our body, works together with certain types of diseases, such as multiple sclerosis. Secondly, they look at neurology, so how the brain develops and how we can use this to treat diseases, like for example, regenerate in the brain, then in the tissue. And then, as the third one, they look at the cardiovascular system. They want to see how certain molecular pathways are involved in certain kidney as well as cardiac diseases. So that's what we do here. Let's go. And this is our office with a real messy PhD desk. Hashtag PhD life. And today we're going to do literature search. So today I will be searching for literature. So what does it actually mean? Like I have to search for some scientific uh, principles to see if my theory that I want to execute in the lab is valid. Now uh, what actually is literature? So are there actually two ways that sci scientists communicate? I would say one way is to communicate with the general public, for example you guys, which I'm communicating to now, so not really like scientist to scientist necessarily. And of course you have the scientist to scientist way of communication. And there are actually, I would say, two main principles of communicating from scientist to scientist. There are, of course, more than I will than I will tell you now, but these are the two main ways, I would say. And first of all, it's presentation. So presenting at a conference, these are gatherings of scientists coming together and talking about a certain scientific topic. So what is their progress in the field? What have they done so far? What did they discover? And the second one is papers, like this one. So we write a paper and then we submit it to a journal and then when it gets accepted, it gets published. So I would say like a scientific paper like this one, it's like a, an introduction. So you say what has been going on in the field and what is still lacking maybe. And then you explain uh, in the materials and methods what you have done. So exactly how you've done the experimental details, how you executed your experiments in the hope that somebody can reproduce these results when they read your paper and then you go into results and discussion there you say like okay we saw this and uh, we think that is because of this certain scientific principle and then in the end you have a conclusion so this is the type of way that we scientists communicate to each other mainly through papers so for example when i have a, a new theory that i want to test for my nanoparticles i have to first go through this type of literature to see if other scientists have already done this or if certain kind of aspects are possible for my theory. And that's what I'm going to do today. So today I'm going to go through literature. Well, I hear you wonder, why do scientists publish their results into papers and why do other scientists read all these papers? Well, first of all, we read them because we want to stay up to date with our field. That being said, we publish these papers into journals 
because of a certain kind of validation. These journals have impact factors. Now, what is an impact factor, I hear you say? Well, impact factors are related to the number of times papers in a journal are cited. What is citation? Well, when we, for example, claim something in a paper, and it has been done before by another group scientifically, then we cite their paper. We refer back to their paper. Now, the more times a paper is cited, the more it is reviewed to be important, and the higher the impact factor of the resulting journal will be. So if a journal has a lot of papers with a lot of citations, it will get a high impact factor and will be regarded as an important journal. So that's why we scientists try to publish our papers into journal with high impact factor. Because uh, funding institutions, they think it's very important that you have papers in high impact factor because it means that your science that you do is valid, is important for society. But I, for today, am reading literature because I want to be up to date for my research. So I will be doing this for the rest of the day. Oh, it might take a while. So why do I call this communicating science from scientist to scientist and not from scientist to public? Aren't these papers available for all of you guys? Well, they are and they aren't. Just like every other magazine, you have to pay a subscription fee to be able to access these papers. For me, the university does this. They have a subscription for the whole university and we can access these papers. But Martin, I have more than enough money. I can read any journal paper. Well. Let's be honest, have you ever seen someone on the train reading the International Journal of Fuzzy Systems? Or Biomaterials? No. Gets me to my second point, it's not because it costs money, it's because of the jargon. The scientific language, it is written so difficult that it's almost impossible for someone out of the field to understand what the hell the authors are writing. So that makes it very difficult, very very difficult for people outside of the field or the general public to read this type of papers. Let's get back to literature search work. Okay, so another day done, done with doing literature search. It's dark outside, I'm going home now. See you guys next episode of OMG at Science for more badass science. See you.